What's up, everybody? It's Odin here on it is Sunday. Quite literally, St. Patrick's Day Sunday. And it's been a little bit since I last made a Sunday video. And a lot of shit has happened since, since that video. The shit that I thought last week I was going to make a video, and I didn't. And I, I think the week before, maybe I didn't either. I don't know. Nonetheless, there were times I was thinking about it and just never did. Because there's a lot to talk about. Not the least of which was Thursday being caught in a tornado. Not literally, but almost, more or less. So we we'll talk about that. Talk about my time at Planet Comic Con in Kansas City with my daughter, which that was uh, quite an experience in and of itself. We'll talk about that. But as it is, quite literally St. Patrick's Day, which I give fuck all about. I'm not Irish. I don't know why we celebrate it. But... <laughs> It became a thing. Everything becomes green. You wear sh green shit so you don't get pinched, I guess. Which, I don't know. I don't play those things very often. But for whatever reason, it's fun, so I do it. And I'm even drinking green whiskey tonight. <laughs> because And I did that last night, too. Uh, because I had my daughters this weekend. We celebrated St. Patrick's Day, which was just... Hey, I love corned beef. It's probably my favorite favorite meat dish uh you know i love steak but when it comes down to it i think i almost like corned beef better whatever the case love corned beef and every time this year you can buy it for super cheap so i bought like i don't know what three different roasts and i cooked one up last night for my girls and me uh with some potatoes and cabbage i wish i was good at baking i'd want to make some soda bread sometime but Anyway, I don't care about any of the reasons we celebrate. I only do it to go through the motions and because I like corned beef and uh, I never wear green. So, one time out of the year I might wear something green. But anyway, if you celebrate whatever, you know, all you Irish folk and all you uh, faux Irish folk or whatever. Yeah, cheers to that, so. And I was looking for green food coloring, and I couldn't find any of the liquid food coloring. I could only find gel. And so the gel doesn't mix up as well in the drink, and then it leaves like gel residue at the bottom. It's not not the, not the same. I don't know why I'm bitching about that. Who gives a shit? Anyway, green whiskey tastes just like regular whiskey, and uh, green shirt, so I don't get pinched, I guess. So that's what my daughters and I did last night. Took them home or back to their mom's. You know, this is also their home, but it's not as home as their mom's house. But So took them back to their mom's uh, earlier today and then got here and was making this video to talk about shit. One of those things to talk about is getting caught in a twister. It's a fucking... <laughs> what was her name? When she wasn't the Wicked Witch of the West... Why can't I remember her name? Anyway, saw her on her bike. Da -na -da -na -da -na -na -da -na -da you know, NTM flying around, knitting on a chair, a cow. <laughs> All that shit. It did feel like I was an episode or in the movie Twister or like I was like a storm chaser. So what had ha what had happened was on Thursday I had the day off because it was my kid's spring break, so I had a couple days off just enjoying um you know their spring break so i would take a few days off thursday being one of those days and in the morning when i woke up there was a, a tornado watch watch yeah tornado watch which just means the weather is ripe for a tornado doesn't mean we know if any are coming but the storm that was moving went through kansas and i guess they had like 10 tornadoes and shit but that's kansas always gets tornadoes in missouri we're right next to it so we get you know, we're also a tornado prone area, I guess, which I never had to deal with in Washington or Colorado, Colorado on the plains, you'd get tornadoes occasionally. I think one time in my life, I remember it being a big deal because my mom was at a store in a nearby town that was more out in the plains. And then there was like potential tornado passing that area, but she was fine. But that was the closest my entire time in Colorado. In 
Washington and Colorado, you deal with wildfires and Washington sometimes they have earthquakes, but they're, uh, inland where we were pretty small, hardly ever felt them. Even when I was in the Seattle area, I never felt any earthquakes. Um, and Seattle's not prone to like hurricane or tsunami. I think that might be potentially prone to a tsunami or something, but not as much as some of these other places that get tsunamis a lot or get hurricanes and stuff. So, so natural phenomena is not something I've dealt with a whole, whole lot. So I move here. Everywhere I go, there's places are marked as a tornado shelter. So at my work, there's like tons of tons of places as you walk through the hallway. It's like this is a designated tornado shelter, you know. And when I bought my house, that was a nice feature. Actually, a selling point was she had built this bunker tornado shelter in the garage. So it's actually like a really great place to change the oil because it's like right there in dead center in the garage. Now, the downside of that is if there's a tornado coming, I can't have my vehicle in there because it's we're stuck under it if, if my vehicle's there. So, <laughs> so if you have a vehicle on top of you, uh, forget it. So anyway, um, so that was a selling point. I'm like, oh, cool. And it's like a little tiny bunker area. It's got a little bench, enough room. It was enough room for me and my two daughters. And... So Thursday, we're under tornado watch. Like I said, just means the patterns are ripe and that storm front that's moving here had tornadoes. So we go, okay, I never had to deal with this before. I don't know. Um, and I tell my girls, I'm like, well, we're under tornado watch could mean nothing. You know, I'm like, there's so many houses and buildings around here and trees that it's like they've been there for a long time and untouched by tornadoes. So the chances of one going through our house is very slim. But uh, so I go to the store. My one daughter stays home, my older daughter. And then um, my youngest goes to the store with me. And when we're in the store, you hear it on everybody in the store's phone. You know, like, okay, tornado warning. And you could tell the weather was getting a little more ripe for that and i was also getting like severe thunderstorm warnings and things like that so we all get buzzed in the store tornado warning which that means that typically that means that there's a funnel cloud spotted near you and so i'm like oh shit again never having dealt with it i don't know how much to panic i guess <laughs> and so i get my daughter i'm like all right let's go we got our shit let's go and um, as we're going to the car, there's a few clerks looking outside at the skyline and they're looking to see where the clouds are kind of funneling, you know, oh, over there, that looks like, and there's a big ugly area in the direction we have to go. And I'm like, shit. But as that was happening, it was calm. There was no wind. I mean, just a slight bit of wind, a little bit of drops, nothing big. So, but you could tell you were on the precipice of uh, a storm you know the ions in the air you can see thunder and lightning in the distance um so we get in the car and we're starting to drive and we were stuck at the stoplight for like ever and while we're at the stoplight my daughter's she's babbling because i think she was a little nervous so she just wants to talk but she was talking about how she just learned about tornadoes and her teacher wanted to be a tornado chaser except for that her sister died in a tornado or something. So her mom didn't want to do something crazy story like that. I'm like, okay. And then, um, the sky had this very greenish hue and my daughter goes, Oh, the sky is very green hue to it. And she's like, you know what I learned in school. And this is something I actually knew beforehand, but she's like, when the sky has more of a greenish color, that's like a tornado is close. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay and we're at the stoplight just stuck there and i'm like okay well there's other people on the road they're just as fucked as me i guess if something happens but um so anyway we start going towards the house and we're heading to the storm like where all the shit's happening that's where we're going um but my daughter's there and she has her phone so worst case scenario i'd avoid the storm and tell her to get in the shelter you know i could do that but 
I wanted to get there and as a family. So, um, so I made the decision, like we're driving through this storm. It wasn't looking like a tornado yet, or I don't know. Uh, again, I don't know what to expect. <laughs> and, and as we got closer, things got crazier and crazier. The wind was definitely picking up the lightning and the thunder was cracking. <laughs> and, uh, I could hear the tornado sirens off in the distance. So every town has tornado sirens. They say, yeah, the tornado's coming. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm just hauling ass trying to get, and it's rain is coming down like sheets and it's coming in sideways at an angle. And you're like, well, that's, uh, that's not a good sign. And, uh, <laughs> and the sirens and the thunder, and then my phone is going crazy cause I'm getting alerts now. And these alerts are saying extreme warning, like get to a shelter, get to a place of shelter now type thing. And I'm like, and I get it from three different places. So I get AccuWeather hitting it. I get uh, Google hitting it. And then my ring service is all of them saying, eh, so my phone's going crazy, sirens in the air, thunder and lightning everywhere, sheets of rain, and I'm flying down this road. And, um, you know, it's wet and crazy, and I'm in the Jeep, and I'm like, we're going to get there. And I, as we turned the corner to my house, I told my youngest, I said, when the garage door opens, you just jump out and get inside, get your sister and get in the shelter. And because uh, everything is just setting me off for panic, you know. My memory's a little hazy, but... It felt like, I know it's not true. It's definitely not true. But it felt like there was like shit flying all over me. And this tornado was like right on my neck. Um, thought I saw cows flying in the air. And Auntie M and fucking Wicked Witch and all this shit. So anyway, get in the house. But like right as I'm pulling up, I'm getting more warnings. They're just sending warning after warning on my phone. And my daughter that was at the house is calling me. And I'm like, we were just pulling up, so I didn't answer. <laughs> but she was worried. She's like, she was probably getting warnings on her phone, plus the weather outside was frightful, as they say. So anyway, we get in. I get to break in this little bunker tornado shelter that was built in. Slide the top back. Jump inside. I grabbed some water for all of us. And we sat there. But once we got inside there, we felt safe even if it was an illusion i don't know what it, how well you know in my mind i'm like yeah but what if like a bunch of rubble like falls on top of us or phones we could call for help i guess but but anyway i was like i don't know what's and i had to leave my vehicle my jeep outside i couldn't park it in the garage and it's like hail and rain and thunder and lightning and i'm like oh well, if it's tornado fucks up my jeep it might be a little more safe inside i don't know but Anyway, it was kind of a fun experience. We took some selfies down in the, in the shelter. But it was so loud. Everything echoes. So when my daughters would like giggle or something, it was just loud. I'm like, shh. Everything you say is so much louder down in here. So I think I need to equip it with uh, some earplugs. But that was a crazy experience. And then, I mean, it was so loud outside because you could hear the thunder. You could hear the wind whipping, you know, and in my brain, because you have no visual. I thought about it later. I could have been watching my ring uh, camera, but I didn't think of it at the time until afterwards. But you have no visual. So you're just hearing loud noises. And in my mind, you know, the world's destruction is happening, you know, all around us. And we're just in this little bunker. Anyway, it passes, get the all clear, and we get out and go look. Not a whole lot of damage or anything. If there was a, I believe there was a funnel cloud that came close to touching down or touched close to ground near us, but not through our house or our area. So there was definitely some wind damage. I guess the gusts got up close to 100 miles per hour. And, uh, you know, so there was some shit flown all over the place, debris everywhere and stuff, but no real damage to speak of. And, and we were fine, <laughs> but that was wild, especially that drive home. I was just like, everything that was like panic inducing was happening at that moment. And I'm trying to hold it get together because my youngest daughter's sitting there and she later was like, I thought I felt the car like lifting. I'm like, no, it's just cause I was driving like a madman to get home. 
it was like country roads there's no one else on them you know but but yeah there's just like sheets of water coming in at all directions and yeah it was wild But safe and sound, I never got to go to Oz and experience the Yellow Brick Road or the Wizard or the Witches or the Lollipop Guild. As fun as that sounds. Um, so it's been a bit since I made a video. So last weekend was Planet Comic Con. And I went there with my daughter for the specific reason... She saw that Matthew Lillard of Scream, Scooby-Doo, and Five Nights at Freddy's fame <clears throat> uh, was there. And my daughter's really obsessed with him. Don't ask me why. I always found him annoying as shit. Now, I will say after the fact, I, he seemed very nice. But um, that was the whole reason to go to play. And it, it didn't take much, you know, arm twisting from her to be like, hey, can we go to comic? Because I'm like, yeah, that would be fun. Plus, you really want to go, so I could definitely make that happen because, uh, you know, it's it would be a good bonding experience. And my youngest didn't really want to go, so I'm like, that's great. It'll be just you and I. We're going to go. And so I booked a photo op with Matthew Lillard for her and then bought our day passes because I was like, we'll just do the photo op on Saturday. We'll tour the con and we'll come home. Kansas City is, you know, at the most like three hours away. You know, it's a, it's a little bit of a drive, but not like crazy. So I'm like, we'll just get up early, go to the con all day, uh, enjoy ourselves, exhaust ourselves, and then drive home. That was my plan. And so I booked the photo op for her, and we get up early, and we're driving out there. We're having great conversation. We're excited. Pull into Kansas City. We have to park like two miles away because there's no parking. There was like res reserved parking that I tried to get, but I was too late in getting that. And that was my fault. But, um, so I had to park really far away, but I'm like, that's fine. We'll just walk. Um, so we walk and as we get to the convention, the convention center had wrapping around lines all the way, like three lines and they were all snaked. So I was like, Three lines all the way around the convention center. I'm like, ah, <laughs> this is going to be fun. We're going to be standing here for a long time. And so we got there about 10.30 a.m. to start standing in line. And I don't think we got into the convention until about noon, maybe noon 30. And the photo op session was for 2.40. Now, I'd never done that before. I didn't know how it works or any of that shit. Um, I thought it was a little more of a personal photo op session, you know, but it was not. <laughs> but anyway, that's another part of the story. But anyway, yeah, then um, we get inside. It's about noon. The photo op session is at 240. So I'm like, okay, we got some time. Let's uh, walk around the con. Let's just like experience some things, check out some booths. And Simon Bisley was there. I wanted to see him. So I'm like looking on the map. Where the fuck is Simon Bisley? You know, like, and go find him and his table. See him. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but anyway, it starts getting closer to 2.40. Uh, you know, and they say you should probably wait like a half hour before or something. I don't know. I read that somewhere. But, um, but the place was so overpacked it was uh it was moving through herds of cattle that were very slow moving and people's situational and social awareness is almost nil you know you get lines of people kind of moving and you'd almost don't even want to stop at booths because you'll hold up people behind you and it, it was just way too many people um so when we went to see simon bisley is like on the clear far other end of the convention center as to the celebrity photo area. So I'm like, oh shit, it's going to take us 15 minutes to walk there, you know, like, uh, because the crowds of people and navigating, I'm like, uh, we best make our way over there. So we start walking over there and everything. And I look back at my phone just to one, one last time check. So 
a reservation and the QR code that they sent to my email and I pull it up and uh, it says 2.40 p.m. Cool. We're making good time. And I look a little closer. It says Sunday. Now, this is Saturday that we're there. And my plan was to drive home Saturday night. And this says Sunday. And I just kind of like stopped. And went, <laughs> of course. Uh, so I turned to my daughter and I go, uh, we're coming back tomorrow. And she's like, really? Why? And I'm like, well, because your dad's an idiot, basically. <laughs> I thought for sure I paid for a Saturday photo up. No, Sunday. And I said, well, <laughs> two options. We either drive back home just to drive back in the morning. Either way, we have to pay for more passes because, you know, if I would have known, I could have saved money getting the weekend pass, but they didn't know. So I'm going to have to get passes for Sunday. I'm either going to have to drive home and drive back, which I was like, that's not an option. So we're going to have to get a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> but after I got the new tickets for Sunday and booked the hotel, we are able to breathe a little sigh of relief. Like we got no restrictions on our day. We don't have to be anywhere at any time. We can just enjoy the con all day. And, uh, Plus, uh, Rob Wilson, he was coming to the con, which was funny because I told him, I'm like, we're leaving bright and early and we're going to get there early and enjoy it all day. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, we were at the con for like half an hour and he's like, all right, I'm taking off. I'll be there when I get there. And I'm like, dude, you're going to get there like right before close. What the fuck? <laughs> so he didn't even get there till like three o'clock. But we saw him and then, you know, we were going to have dinner uh, with Rob and just like hang out, uh, my daughter and Rob and myself. But she was just peopled out. She's like, I don't, I don't really want to, you know, hang out with you and your friend. And I'm like, okay, fine, hun. So I canceled that. She just wanted to get back to the hotel room and rest. So we go to the hotel room I booked. So knowing that I was dumping way more money, plus we'd spent a bunch. I was just hemorrhaging money because we kept seeing cool shit I wanted to buy. Plus the just getting into the con and paying for the photo op, everything was already, you know, the tally was going up. So I'm like, uh, we just need a place to stay for the night. It doesn't have to be a nice hotel. Plus in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, this is an experience for my daughter. Everybody has to experience a roach motel sometime. And, uh, you know, I, my dad, when I was a kid, I remember staying in you know, some pretty gross motels. Um, so anyway, I went pretty cheap. Plus, there was nothing around the convention center. We had to go pretty far out of town to get it. And it was the Econo Lodge in, uh, I don't know, it was about 10 minutes out of Kansas City, which is still basically Kansas City. But um, I pull up at the hotel or the motel this is a motel. I've always heard that a motel, the doors are on the outside to your rooms and a hotel. You go inside and the doors for your rooms are on the inside. I don't know if that's true. I think I heard that somewhere, but anyway, if that's the case, this was a motel because your room to your door was on the outside, which is almost preferable in some ways. But as I pulled in, I'm like, this place is not just a roach motel. This is like, scary <laughs> you know? and uh just me by myself don't really worry too much but having my daughter with me made it a little more heightened uh the safety reality so anyway i go inside to confirm the res. you know i made it online just to get my room key and all that other shit and the guys working the place were shady and I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever anyway get the room key and i go park I park in front of the building and there's like a, a window and this guy just like standing at the window in a dark room just like staring at us. I'm like off-putting, you know, like what the fuck? And I'm like, this is, you know, I'm seeing the trash bins over full. I've seen like mattresses outside of the rooms leaning up against the wall. I'm like, this is a fucking crack fucking motel. This is a fucking prostitution motel. I'm like, shit. 
Why did I not read the reviews? <laughs> it was the cheapest game in town. Uh, and it still wasn't that much cheaper, but it was like, fuck, whatever. So anyway, we get into our room and I had to get a room with two beds for my daughter's sake, you know. Um, so anyway, we go inside, sit on the bed. I'm like, shit, just to get my mind off the crazy crackheads and shit. I'm trying to turn the TV on, but the road to the TV, the batteries are dead. So I get up and I manly, manually turn it on and it's this tiny old weird TV the beds, everything in the place looked, you know, a hundred years old. And, um, I'm like, shit, man, maybe I should read these reviews. And so I go to the place. It's got horrible reviews. All the most recent ones were one star reviews. And my daughter's laying on one bed. I'm sitting on the other one. And it's like, this place had bed bugs. This place had bed bugs. This place had bed bugs. This place had roaches. This is disgusting. And you know, there's a uh, hair all over their fucking sinks and you know and whatever and i'm like fuck this is gross and so uh i see the bed bug thing and i'm like oh that's why those mattresses were out on the out of the rooms and i tell my daughter get up off your bed just just for a sec i gotta make sure we're staying here um because i really didn't want it because it was already said like no backing out you know room refund and i'm like but I've already spent so much money. <laughs> like, I just I just want a comfortable place for me and my daughter tonight. So, and I'm looking at those reviews. Anyway, then I kind of look over at my bed. And I see there's these blotchy red stains all over the um, comforter bedspread. And I'm like, eh, well, could be nail polish could be looks like blood to me i'm like that's it we're out of here fuck this place and uh <laughs> told my daughter stay off that bed do not lay on the bed do not get under those covers um so then i'm like fuck it just go for broke uh, i'll get a room at the sheraton which is about twice as much but i don't have to worry about like every review was great the place was great and anyway, we get to the Sheraton. It's like night and day difference. Um, get up to my room and my daughter, God bless her. She's got a good, she's got my sense of humor. She's like, well, this place is a dump. <laughs> As we walk in the Sheraton room, it was super nice, especially in comparison. You know, it's like a typical, what I would think of a typical hotel room, but it's like, yeah, night and day difference. So, uh, you know, I asked my daughter, I'm like, are you hungry? There's a lobby downstairs, you know, they have good food. Um, and she's like, ah, I'm not really hungry. And she's like, I kind of just need to chill. And I'm like, that's fine. You know, you have the room, uh, enjoy the bed, enjoy the TV and movies or whatever, take a shower, whatever you want to do. I'm needing a drink. I'm going down to the lobby. I'm going to get some food and a drink. And the lobby's all nice. Everybody's fucking preppy and weird. But I'm like, at least it doesn't feel dangerous, I guess. And uh, I don't have to worry about bed bugs. Or I, in theory, I wouldn't have to worry about bed bugs. So, um, so I enjoyed that drink. Um, and went back up to the room. Hung out with my daughter for a little bit. And we went to bed. Got up to go to day two of planet comic-con so that she could meet matthew lillard well the whole time that she realized we were going to have a second day there she's like do you think i could meet dante basco i always want to say dante brasco because i always think of donny brasco but uh anyway dante basco who was uh i think it was yuko in the avatar anime cartoons which I got my daughters into. I never really watched them, but uh, everybody always spoke highly of them, and uh, my daughters love it. So it's one of their favorite shows. And uh, he did the voice of Yuko, I guess, which I think was the fire element kid. But anyway, he was one of the celebrity guests there, and I said, you know, honey, we got the whole day, you know, and we already experienced everything yesterday. So, uh, yeah. 
if we want to, you know, wait in line to meet Dante Bas- Basco, which is funny. It sounds like Dasco, but it might be Bosco. I don't know. But if we want to wait in line, uh, yeah, we can do that for you, hon. So anyway, and I'm like, our appointment's not until 2.40, so let's get there early again so we can make sure you can get in line early to meet this Dante Basco, who I found out also was, uh, uh, he was the lead boy in The Lost Boys, not The Lost Boys, the movie, but in, in Hook. He was the, the leader. He was a Filipino actor. And he had kind of like a pompadour or spike mullet thing. But anyway, that's what I remembered him from. And when I saw him, I'm like, where do I know that guy from? And that's when I realized. But she wanted to meet him for the Yuko thing. So we get in line and we're behind like 70 people, it seems like. And then they cap the line. And then there's like a line behind us that is like people it's like the line to wait in line (laughs) it's just people congregating they're like you can't be in line the line stops here you can just stand over there and wait till we can allow more so so we're in this long line we're waiting and waiting and he's not even at the booth we're just waiting and waiting so hours go by and we're just standing there and i'm starting to look at the clock going like well, I sure hope we don't miss Matthew Lillard just to get this one because I already prepaid for Matthew Mil- Lillard. And that was the whole reason we came here. Now, I wasn't too worried about it, but it was starting to get to where, you know, I'm like, <laughs> I got to think about this. And at that point, I was telling my daughter, if it comes down to it, you go to the Matthew Lillard, L- Lillard area, get your photo op with him, Because really, she had a Funko of Yuko. A Funko of Yuko. I think that's his name, Yuko. But um, she wanted him to sign it. She also wanted a selfie with him. And I was like, well, we can do both. But um, you have to pay for both. But I was like, worst case scenario, you go see Matthew Lillard. I'll get your Funko signed for you. But it didn't come to that. Eventually, he showed up. The line starts moving. We get up there. You know, at this point, like we got there again about 1030 in the morning. At this point, it's like one o'clock, 130. And uh, yeah, probably more like 130. It was almost two actually when we left. So we get up there, meet him, pay for the the signing of her Yuko Funko Pop. And he signed it and he even personalized it. She's like, can you have him say, uh, I don't need calming tea because it's a joke between her and her sister. And he like wrote that on there and. For Sophia, you know, it was really cool. And then did the selfie and uh, took the picture and he was super nice. And she was all happy about that. And I'm like, okay, we waited in line our entire day to see him. Let's go over to the Matthew Lillard area and get in another line. So what it is, is you paid for the 240 session with like 100 other people, you know. Who paid for that 240 session and so then you go and stand in another line and you're all the 240 people and you wait and you wait and you walk a little bit and you walk a little bit well it wasn't even until almost four o'clock before we actually got to the to matthew lillard so standing in line on concrete floors after walking the entire day not only walking the convention, but walking to the car, which we had to park far away, walking up and down hotels and things like this. Cause we went to one, went to another. And then the next day, just standing stationary on concrete floors for an entire day. Like, so anyway, we, <laughs> we finally get to see him, right? And it's funny. It's like this weird, heavenly angelic moment because they have them all curtained off. Those of you who have seen it, it's like a curtained area. And you walk this corridor of curtains until you come to the celebrity. And you round this corner, and there they are. There's Matthew Lillard with his weirdo smile. And uh, But he seems so excited to see you. He played it exactly how he's supposed to. Uh, and, and we walk in. I wasn't going to be in the picture. It's just for my daughter. So I'm holding her stuff, and she walks up. And he's like, hey, 
how's the con been treating you? It's really nice to meet you. What's your name? And, you know, she's a Sophia. And then uh, it's been great. And then puts his arm around her, holds her close to him, smiles for the camera. Again, the weird Matthew Lillard smile. And he says, oh, it's so nice to meet you. And then you're just kind of ushered out. But it's funny, as you round that corner, because they have the photography lights and the flashes and everything, and he's just standing there. Oh, hey, kid. Come over here and see Matthew Lillard. Let's take a picture together. All right, now get out of here. <laughs> so then you go and you stand in another line. And there's people running around with these prints of photos. And I'm like, is this you? Is this you? You know, just holding them up. And then I see the one with uh, Sophia. Hey, that's us. And we get that. Then we have to go to another line cause, to get the digital download. Because that was very important to her as well. Can't just like snap a picture of that. I have it as a digital. So you need the digital download. The high res digital download. So anyway, then we stand in another line. Long ass line again. That's moving very slow again. Like one person working the counter. And so anyway, being that it was Sunday, they closed the convention at 5 p.m. And you hear it over the intercom. We're going to close at 5 p.m. You know, and it's like, oh, OK, so we're still in line. I'm like, I'm getting this damn dig digital download. I'm not leaving until I get this shit, you know. And finally, we get the digital download while we were waiting in that line. We saw freaking Ron Perlman walk by who uh, looks really weird, by the way. He's so old, he's like hunched over and his head's like gigantic, you know, but he's not nearly as tall as you picture him. But his head's much bigger than you pictured. And he's all hunched over and he's like... Rrr. And somebody said like, oh, hey, Ron. And he's like, hey. And he looked like a fucking cave troll or something. Like a really short one. Like, he looked like he had gigantism, but he was only, like, six foot tall, you know? <laughs> like, like again, six foot tall is tall, but I guess because he was hunched over, he looked even shorter, but his head was gigantic. Anyway, I wasn't there to see Ron Perlman. I didn't give a shit, but because uh, he's kind of a fucking tool anyway. He's made some cool movies, been some cool characters, but... So we get the digital download. We, we're leaving right as they're closing. It's five o'clock. So, from 10.30 a.m. till 5 p.m., we stood in line the entire time. And for about two minutes total of interaction with these celebrities that she wanted their time. So, <laughs> and nothing can really, I mean, especially after the whole first day of walking nonstop. And just to go to that second day of just like stiffening your body up, just like standing all day, all day, all day on concrete, all day standing, you know, you'd move every once in a while. And I remember my daughter every once in a while was like, cause there'd be like a little bit of an open area. She's like, can you just hold, you know, I'll be right back. And she would just go and like pace really fast, like sprint walk back and forth just to like stretch herself. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea, but I'm not going to do that. And then came the long drive home. That was Sunday evening. That's why I didn't make a video last Sunday because uh, <laughs> I, was, I was too tired. I didn't get home. So, like I said, it's about three hours from Kansas City to Springfield. Well, I'm not stopping in Springfield. My house is a little further than that. Plus, I'm not going to my house yet. I've got to drop my daughter off at her mom's house, which is another almost two hours added on. Uh, luckily, her mom met me uh, a few towns in between, so didn't have to drive as far, but drop her off with her mom and then come back to my house. But I didn't walk in to the front door until about midnight 30 after all was said and done because we had dinner afterwards and long drive back and all this stuff. But, so I got back home about midnight, midnight 30, uh, and I had to work the next day. So I was like, I'm not making a video. So yeah, that was uh, that was Planet Comic Con. It was a fun experience, a bonding experience between my girl, my uh, daughter, and me. 
regardless of how much I kind of bitch about like we stood in line all freaking day for two minutes of interaction. It made her day. She loved it. Um, she looked beautiful. She was cosplaying as Donnie Darko, which was just him in his Halloween costume, which was the skeleton uh, jumpsuit with a gray hoodie. And uh, she's walking around with that. And I think she had her hood up. I would have been, would imagine that's when it happened. But somebody recognized her costume. Somebody's like, hey, are you cosplaying as Donnie Darko? And she's like, yeah. It just made her day, too. So that was really cool because it's a pretty ambiguous costume especially for a girl to be wearing it for somebody to be like oh you're donnie darko that was pretty cool um and then like i said you know i bought a bunch of stuff i bought her some shit i bought her that funko that she ended up getting signed um bought her some random keychains and shit then paid for the fucking signings and stuff uh they bought her a poster i don't remember what all she got but i got some comic books that's all i cared about so before we wrap this up, I will go through my haul and, uh, but before I get to that, kill them dead. This is a new page that I'm working on. Uh, we'll show the whole view of what's going on here. Uh, as we move into another phase of the story, um, Signups will be in the link below. There's also Magnificent Bastards number two, which is looking incredible. Like the new artist is uh, such an incredible talent. Sketch 51. I think it's 51. Is it 41? I think it's 51. Uh, he's just taken the Magnificent Bastards vision and run with it. It's looking great. So Magnificent Bastards 2 sign up. I'll put that link down below. Also... I don't have the link yet, but I'll probably have, it'll probably be live uh, within the week is the Unconditional Shove reprints, which are going to be really cool. I'm excited for it because uh, it's going to look different. It's going to feel different. It's going to be reprints. But for anyone who missed out or anyone who wanted, uh, I've talked about this before, want a reader copy. Like, you don't want to touch that original that was, like, very limited. You get this second print. It's uh, going to be a little easier to read. The paper's going to be lighter. It's going to be cheaper for us to print. They're only going to be black and white. Um, the color will, the cover will be color. And then, uh, yeah, so I'm excited for those because I get to take those to cons. I get to take those to my local comic shop. I get to sell them to anybody who hasn't got a copy so you can catch up and uh, see what the fuss is about and uh, yeah so I'm really excited for that so unconditional shove reprint uh, there'll be much more discounted price as well so you pick them up uh, relatively cheap that said it's still an 82 page book because there's no Cole story in this one it's still an 82 page book so you're still um, you know, it's a decent sized book, so I can't give it away for like peanuts, but, um, but it'll be well discounted. And, uh, so I'm excited for that. I mean, I wish I had the link right now and maybe I might have a link or maybe I'll go back and edit it and put that link down there. So, so if you're watching this like on Monday or Tuesday, there might be a link. So check, uh, also the signups for splash, which is skunk artworks, uh, debut, um, soul project that he's working on which is just him he wrote it he he's draw drawn it uh it's nearly complete i'd say seven eighths complete so um that by the time it launches could be like completely done and just ready to ship and it is beautiful the artwork is incredible uh the story is uplifting and uh full of positive morality uh it's an all-ages book mostly for children adults are going to love it as well of course um featuring skunk artworks amazing artwork and uh and it's going to be translated in english and in german and it's just a phenomenal uh debut performance from uh skunk artworks as far as like making a book it's something he's wanted to do for a long time uh he came to us with the idea 
and it was a no brainer. I mean, it's like, dude, this is beautiful. And so, uh, if you need a gift for your kids or for grandkids or for, uh, gift suggestions, other people, cause people buy children's books all the time. You know, I'm, I'm guessing it's, uh, I don't know what the age range is cause I haven't read the actual verbiage, but, uh, you know, I am guessing you could read it to someone as young as like kindergarten, um, or have them read it, I think. So, so literally all ages and, uh, and again, it's full of the good stuff, the moral message, the, um, persevering through trials and, and, uh, courage and, uh, honesty and all these things, you know? So, so definitely something you want to get. And it's accompanied by one of the best artists out there. Uh, his beautiful, it's all black and white, but it's just gorgeous what he's done with it. So we got splash signups. Uh, soon to come, we'll have signups for Cascadia, which is my friend Ryan Miller's book, which looks beautiful as well. Another all hand painted, hand drawn uh, book. And Ryan has a very, very large vision for this. And um, it's again, kind of a story of a coming of age and uh, becoming a man. That's kind of like the, the story as you follow the main character. So Cascadia looks great. Excited for that. And then Paper Machete, that will be coming in sign up as well, which is a, a horror book that is uh, written by Good Stuff and by James. They're writing it together. And uh, that one is a really fun uh, thriller, horror, slasher story uh, involving... I can't remember what they call it, but it's a uh, Amish teenagers. They go through the thing where they get to go out in the world. And as these teenagers go out in the world, they discover the world of, uh, underground punk and heavy metal and get caught up in some very cultic, uh, ritualistic, crazy, horrific fight for their life type stuff. So, uh, paper machete, uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. So that one, those signups are coming very soon as well. And I think that kind of covers the, the list of things, but now that that's out of the way, let's go back to planet comic con and the hall I got, and it was not like a huge hall, but there were some books that I was very happy to get. So this is the first one I picked up, but I don't know if anyone else remembers. I remember this on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. And I remember I kept seeing it and wondering about it. And I always thought it looked pretty good. I knew nothing about the creator. I knew nothing really about the story. Uh, but the artwork looked good. And uh, of course, I met the guy. And this looks like a self-insert here. That's basically what he looked like. Jeremy Hahn. He was a super cool guy. Uh, but he had the crowdfunding campaigns, both the Kickstarter and Indiegogo for this book, mostly for the hardcover. And he had like these coins and things printed and uh, whatever, the, the tchotchkes and stuff. This paperback was actually uh, published through Image. And apparently the guys had several different titles published through Image. So to whatever credit that is. But yeah. Um, Seemed like a pretty creative guy, and the artwork was good, and he did both the writing and the artwork. And um, and so, yeah, I was excited when I saw it. I went, oh, that was that one I kept seeing on uh, Kickstarter and stuff. And um, so I stopped. I talked to him for quite a bit. He actually lives uh, near me. So, like, he lives in Joplin, Missouri, which is, uh, I don't know, about an hour away uh, from where I'm at, maybe even less. So that was pretty cool, like uh, a local guy to where I'm living now. And uh, that's part of the reason he was at Kansas City Comic Con, I assume. But super cool. I'm excited to read it. It's a nice, uh, thick graphic novel. So that looks great. And then uh, next on my list is this one here, which I got signed by Simon Bisley. As you can see, you can see what I paid for it. But 
Um, so yeah, Simon Bisley. That was uh, the one person I was there to meet. Uh, it's no joke that the person most responsible for me wanting to make comic book art is Simon Bisley. And so I wanted to get something signed by him. Now that's it. He seems like a cool guy. And everybody I've known who's met him, like, oh, he's the greatest. He's super cool. Uh, my my encounter with him was a uh, very uh, uninspiring and uh, what's what's the term? I don't know what the term is, but anyway, it was just like whatever. So I went up to his booth and he had kind of like a, a a gal there. Um, I don't know if it was his wife or his daughter or his handler or what but she did all the talking and he's sitting there drawing and I'm like, fuck, it's Simon Bisley. And my daughter's like, Oh, that's that guy you always tell me about. And then that you love so much. I'm like, that's him. Yeah. So I'm like, Hey man, like, uh, no joke. You're the reason I do everything. And I'm like, you know, I saw a fanboy out like an idiot, I guess. But, um, but he didn't look up from his drawing the entire time. Uh, all I heard him say was right on in his, uh, British accent. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I want this, uh, you know, and she hands it to him to sign it. And he signs it. He's like, cheers, you know, and we're like, all right, I guess that's it. <laughs> that was my encounter with Simon Bisley. But that's it. At least, uh, at least I got to meet him, I guess. I don't know. Didn't really meet him, but, uh, at least I got to get something signed by him and see him <laughs> face to face. My favorite that I got at the convention, though, is this guy here, which is uh, the first print of the Creep Show magazine comic, which um, uh, precedes the movie even. And uh, one thing I noticed, and you can see it there, that's Bernie Wrightson. <laughs> they misspelled Bernie. So they had a first printing and a second printing, and I kind of looked at them and I'm like, I wonder if there's any differences noticeably on the cover. And that was the one difference. So on the second printing, they had the E on the end. On the first printing, they misspelled it. But I'm like, my love for horror anthologies, this was a must-have. And so I'm like, yeah, I definitely got to get this. So I was very, very excited to get this guy. And I love the posters. You got Carrie, The Shining, and uh, Dawn of the Dead there in the background. Great cover. What else did I get? Oh, I got to meet... Uh, I got this stuff all discombobulated. I got to meet Tim Vigil, who was not on the list of people that was going to be there. But I got to meet Tim Vigil because I was just walking by booths and I saw him. I'm <laughs> like, oh, Tim Vigil. And so I stopped and there was a guy who was making this book called bad candy and the reason tim vigil is there because apparently he did the pencils on on this issue and not that they're anything crazy amazing or whatever because it was still inked by the guy who created it or whatever but but nonetheless i stopped and the creator of the comic uh robert henry as it goes as it is uh, was super nice. Talked my ear off. One of the coolest people I met. And uh, Tim Vigil was just like Simon Bisley. He was sitting there drawing. He was just like, eh, whatever, like aloof about everything. And I get it. Like these guys, Simon Bisley, Tim Vigil, they've been doing cons for 30 years now or more. And, you know, it is like whatever, you know, <laughs> at a certain point. And I hope I never get to that point. But, um, that's kind of what it was. But anyway, I bought the full set of his books because I like independent creators. It doesn't look like anything amazing, but the guy was super cool. And, uh, and he had Tim Vigil sitting there. So I didn't get anything signed by Vigil, but I did get a Faust sticker that is going to go on the Jeep once I remember to put it on there. And I bought a Faust shirt. And it was like a similar thing. I was fanboying out. I'm like, dude, the first time somebody handed me a copy of Faust, it changed everything I thought about comics. It was like a revelation. I'd never seen that kind of um, 
art style and it just blew my mind he's like oh cool cool nice you know it's just like whatever and i'm like well you meant a lot to me <laughs> whether that means anything to you apparently it doesn't but it was the same as i'm busy so whatever it's almost like one of those don't meet your heroes kind of things but on the same hand it's like i don't know if i'm just awkward in person or what but i was like or they just didn't want to be bought they were both drawing at the time fair enough but nonetheless like tim vigil was not why i went there but i was like oh tim vigil you're one of my favorites simon visley was literally the the one reason like my daughter was like i want to go see and you know do the thing with matthew lillard and i'm like well let me look who else is there and i'm like oh simon visley's gonna be a, i'm gonna go and it was all about meeting simon visley for me now it was a huge let down but on the same hand so again it's like all of that build up for hardly anything but i don't hold it against them it's just what it is um i still had a blast with my daughter and i was able to explain to her like yeah these guys go to cons year round and they've been doing that year round all the time for you know however many years you know it does get a little samey and you meet one fanboy you meet them all right again i hope i never get to that point but what but the other weird thing is everybody else i've known is like oh simon bisley's so cool like he's great to talk to and i'm like well it wasn't my experience but hey i'm just one guy it doesn't change the fact that he's like the uh most inspirational artist for me personally you know i can say like frazetta is probably more of an inspiration in a overall sense just because since i can remember i've seen frazetta art and go that screams like fantastic worlds and things like that whereas when i got into comic book simon bisley when i first picked up lobo's back number one and I was actually at, filtering through lawn boxes looking for a Lobo's back number one to get him to sign that. But I couldn't find it. Like, I didn't bring my copy, but whatever. Getting the Bisley sketchbook was pretty cool. But when I first saw that, it just changed how I viewed, like, comic book art. Because before that, I was, like, into, like, Jim Lee. It was, like, very clean and everything was very structured. And then when I saw Simon Bisley, especially his inks... I was like, this is like outside of the lines and scribbles and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you can do that? <laughs> I didn't think you could do that. But it, it it just broadened my horizon. But then his painted works and the way he drew musculature and just insanity. I was like, I love Simon Bisley so much. Um, so that was a bit of a letdown. But, but anyway, I got a haul. I didn't show the Faust shirt. That was pretty cool, too. But I'm coming up on an hour here. And I think I basically covered most everything. I did get, um, and this was just at a store in the mall yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. I got this guy. So my daughter wanted uh, a statue. And at the place we were at, they were all like, buy one, get one for half price. I'm like, yeah, you know, like it doesn't even make sense unless we use the deal. And that's why they, that's how they get you, right? And I'm like, okay, you want that statue. That's not a cheap statue. It was super cool. It was uh, the character from Death Note, the crazy one. Is it like Ruku? Ryoku? I don't know how you pronounce it. Again, my kids like Death Note. I never really watched it. But um, he is a very like cool looking character design. And this statue was badass. Super badass. It's just like, I want it. And I'm like, holy fuck. Look at that price tag. I'm like, well, <laughs> the only way this will work is if I find something I can't live without. And she actually pointed this out because we had a long conversation about this as she's getting more into Wolverine. 
but they have this one. This Weapon X statue is, uh, I said, okay, yeah, I gotta have that. So, I ended up getting a toy for myself, a statue for myself, uh, to justify getting one for my daughter. <laughs> and then her sister wanted, like, her stuff, which was, you know, more like, I don't know, she's more girly girl, she's younger, it's like Hello Kitty shit and stuff like that. But, um, so, yeah. I was excited to get, I wonder if this camera might, might see it a little better. This really cool Weapon X statue. So yeah, I went up on the, the bookcase with the others and so that's one more thing I got. Now we're literally over an hour, so I'm going to wrap it up. Um, but there was a lot to talk about. There was the tornado and there was the comic. Oh, there was two things to talk about. <laughs> oh, three things. Because also all the books that are in signups or, um, or are coming soon. So. so, yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks for joining me. Um, anybody who comes and checks out or listens to me ramble this, this long, especially if you made it this long, hey, you're like a true friend at this point. <laughs> <laughs> and with that uh it is saint patrick's day for another few hours cheers uh, I'm trying to think of something irish or saint patrick's day to say but i don't know any of that shit because i'm not irish so we'll just say cheers and uh enjoy responsibly i will not be going out tonight i have to work tomorrow so anyway Thanks again for uh, joining me and hearing me ramble about some shit. Check out all the books I talked about. Links will be below. Until next time, it's Zoden here. We'll see ya.